Hallelujah. 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 Amen. We love him because he first loved us. Aren't you glad to know that? It is him who first loved us. Before we were even born, he made a way for us. He knew that we will be here. So we are not here by mistake, but by his foreknowledge. Just want to welcome you all in the house of the Lord. All our visitors, those that have come here for the first time, we want to welcome you. We say, feel free. We are glad to have you in the house of the Lord. We are only here for one purpose to hear from the Lord. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are glad to for what our sister have done to take a decision to be baptized. Yesterday before the baptism we were just fellowshipping say so, you know for one to take a decision they must be a conviction first. It is only God who can bring a conviction into a person's heart. So we can only like, uh, you know, when Peter had preached, just uh, after the day of Pentecost, Pentecost, the Bible says, those that hear him preaching, they were pricked in their hearts. Then when they were pricked, they did not end there. A lot of people, when they hear the message, and it pricks them, they go away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But these ones, they asked Peter, say, say, they said, many and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. When you read further, you will hear that they, they, they were baptized. And on that day, about 3,000 souls were added. Hallelujah. Amen. They made the decision to follow Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. We are glad for that decision that our sister made. And we believe he's going to our Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to bring more. You know, as we were singing, uh, something just came to my mind. Say, you know, we are living in the last days where we are seeing... Uh, Signs of his coming. Signs of the end. Wars all over. The world is in a Sodom condition. The world is in a Sodom condition. It is ripe for destruction. Hallelujah. Amen. But what is holding that destruction? It is that last one. That last one. When 
He comes in. Then the door will be closed. But now, the door of mercy is still open. Waiting for that one. Hallelujah. Amen. So it is our duty to invite. It is our duty to testify. The prophet says, God is depending on us. Not to quarrel. No. God is depending on us not to criticize those that are criticizing others. He is depending on us to win souls to his kingdom. If I may ask one question. How many souls have you won to Christ since you have believed? We are seeing a lot of things happening in the message cycles. Some are fighting, measuring on minors, leaving them the very purpose of our existence unattended. How many souls have you brought to Christ since you have received this message? If you haven't won one, no. I'm encouraging you this afternoon that God is depending on you. Hallelujah. Amen. God is depending on us to testify. Go out there, testify to the world. Hallelujah. Amen. So we thank the Lord so much for remembering us in this end times. He gave us a message, a message to prepare ourselves, a message of preparation. Hallelujah. Amen. That we will prepare us for the coming of Christ. It is not time to fight. It is not time to wrestle. Time is fast spent. You know, I was saying we have got one thing in common. Only one thing that we have in common. We are sons and daughters of God. In you, my sister, there is a portion, a part of God. In you, my brother, there is a portion, there is a part of God. So that is the only thing that can make us one. That is the only thing that can make us come together. These other things, they are secondary. So we are one family. We are came from God, dropped into time, and we are going back to God again. Hallelujah. Amen. So why do we sometimes wrestle? No, that brother is not right. That sister is not right. But God loved us before we even came to this world. And he made a way for you and me out of love. All those sins that you have done, he made a way for you. Yako. So I don't think it is necessary for us to measure on those minor things. We should be encouraging one another in love because we are one. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I know that there are a lot of questions and complaints. Some they don't see eye to eye with what is happening. My advice to you is just to be patient. God is watching over you. Hallelujah. Amen. Nothing is out of cater. You know, in a family, we are in families. We have problems. Sometimes we pass through things. But because we are 
one family. We don't run away because there is a problem. No, when a problem comes, it is high time for you and me to come together because we are one. When you see someone going away from a family, because there is a problem, it means that he is not part of that family. Yes. It's not something that is strange to have problems. That is something that is common. Actually, those that know, they know that it's part of life. Every family has got its issues. Hallelujah. Amen. So we should do, have that love. If you see a brother or a sister, but no, is not maybe walking right. Don't go with the sword and. No, it is God who have allowed you to see that no, my sister is not walking right. I believe with the intention of helping. He knows that you have got enough love in you to help that brother. So he allows you to see a fault. So if you go in now and say, ah, ah, this one is lost. Then you will be, de be defeating God's purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. We were singing that we love him because he first loved us. So if you have a part of God in you, obvious that love is in you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 There's a scripture that I just remembered as no. our brother was singing. No. Matthew chapter 8, verse 24. Matthew 8, 24. The Bible says, No, no we just, we can, we can be seated. Okay. It said, it And behold, they kept arose a tempest. Into a is purple. In the sea. Uh, in the sea. Elon, Elon. Amen. In so much that the ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. Who was this one who was asleep? The Lord Jesus Christ. Was there in the ship with the disciples and there arose a tempest. In so much that the ship was covered with the waves. Amen. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, say, saying, Lord, save us. We perish. But he was in the boat. He was in that ship. Already the disciples were seeing that we are perishing. My sister, let me say this to you. You are not going to perish because he is in you. Our God cannot perish with this tempest of this world. Hallelujah. Amen. He is in you. Greater is the one that is in you than the one that is in the world. Yes. We may feel sick but greater is he that is in you than the one that is in the sickness. He is more than able to heal you. He is there as he was there in the ship. And he is here with us this afternoon. So worry not. Tell your neighbor and say, worry not. He is in the building this afternoon. Hallelujah. Amen. So the disciples, they say to him, save us. 
we perish. And he said unto them, Why are you fearful? They were fearful, but the master was there with them. He was resting, but he was there. So he said to them, O ye of little faith, then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great cow. Hallelujah. Amen. So you can awoke him this afternoon and tell him your stories, what you want. Don't be fearful. He is here with us. Hallelujah. Amen. The prophet says in the message, the prophet. infallible word of God, God before the foundation of the world looked down through the stream of time and saw everything that would be God before the foundation of the world. He looked down through the stream of time and saw everything. So you cannot come today and say, maybe God doesn't, is not away that I'm, I'm, I'm sick or I'm needed. He saw everything, including your problem. He saw it. And the end of your problem, he saw it. Hallelujah. Amen. He saw everything that would be. He could call and elect those who he knew that would do. He called and elect those who he knew that he would put into this building. That's right. So nothing is out of care. Because before there was a foundation, he elected, he chose, and elected. So you can't say, brother, maybe I'm here by mistake. No. You are here by his foreknowledge. If you only know that, brother, you will be certain. Even if they come in tempest, you just rest and say, God, you know my name. You are the one who elected me into this faith. Hallelujah. Amen. So, you know, usually when there is a problem, when there are problems, it's when people come with some solutions. Some decide to jump trying to help their lives. But no, it's not time to do that. He, he is here with us. He is in the building. He is in the ship. He is in you. He is watching over you. He knows what you are going through. One day, I, 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 if you remember, when we were still worshipping at that site. God used Pastor Chireka to say something. I don't know how many of you. He said, I have given you a new place of worship. He didn't say, I will give you. He said, I have given you because we are desiring it. Right. So when he said that, of course we, we when you desire something, you will be having some specification. I will give you my testimony. I once prayed unto the Lord and said, I need a baby boy. Not just a baby. No. I need, I want a baby boy. 
So, when my wife conceived, they went for a scan with another micro. And the scan said it's a baby girl. But I had requested a, for a baby boy from the Lord. Not from the scan or the doctor. So I said to my, my guru, it's a boy. Then she said, no. But here is the results of, here the results of the scan. So they went on to buy preparation for a baby girl. And I never wrestled with them because they were looking at the scan results. But I was looking at the unseen. My eyes were looking above, believing God that He will give me according to my request. In fact, I was saying, He has already given me my request. So they bought those clothes. But on the delivery date, it was a boy. And my, my group came to me and said, but Bamnin, how come you? Then I said, I knew it. So it depends on what you are looking at. If you look at If you look at the scan, it will be according to the scan. But if you look unto the Lord, it will be according to your desire. God answers desires. Let me safely say that place was already given to you. But of course, there is a time frame. There is some patience that is needed. It's not high time to say, ah, that brother is wrong. We are privileged because we have brothers who sacrifice their times, resources to run around while it's we are seated. Who are we at times to come and say, but brother, this thing that you have done is not the best. But they have sacrificed their time. You know what? One thing that is very difficult is to be a pastor or a shepherd. Because in the same church, you will find people with different ideas. Some will come and say, ah, that idea is not the best. Because of this, we are living in the church. Some they sacrifice to say, ah, no, pastor, we are going, we are going around to do this and this, which is very right. So you, you, you are now left at the center to decide. Others are saying, no, because of this we are, but you know what, if you are part of the family, even if there is a problem, you don't go away because there is a problem. I was talking to your brother one day and saying, uh, they are believers who are always nomadic. Nomadic. They, are, they don't have a, a place which they say, no, this is our place. When they get, go, go to a place and, if, and find something to criticize, they will simply say, ah, now, because of this, we are going to that. When they get there again, then they find something that doesn't go 
oh, along God. with them. They will say, I know. I look, I we are going to that other place. So I was saying to this brother, you have to watch the history of your person. Some have spirits that always drive them. But the prophet says every believer should have a church where they call is their home. They support with their presence and paying of their tithes. So if you are nomadic, then how do you take this court? Because every congregation has got its issues. It's like that. Every congregation has got its ups and downs. So if you were to say, I oh, know this one I was there, so they did this. I was there, they did this. You have problems. If God allows you to see a mistake in a brother, why can't you go to them with the love that is in you and try to win them back to the faith? We are each other's keeper. We don't push other down. We lift each other's hands. Here at Jobek spoken word tabernacle we have love and love only. It is my prayer that we all have that vision. Brother Branham says, if you see a brother in, 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 in a mistake, but you know that you don't have enough love to win them back, don't correct them. If you don't have enough love to win them back, pray for them. Pray for them. That's what he said. He never says, go and open up the sword and hit them. No. God is love. And Brother Branham says, okay, let me just give a cut. From the word, from the message, beyond, beyond the getting of time. Whatever you do, lay aside everything else until you get perfect love. Get to where you can love everybody. If they are doing it, if they hate one another outside there, you are here. Hear what the prophet is saying. Get to where you can love everybody. He says, even every enemy. You know that this is my enemy. The prophet is saying, love them. Not to walk with a measuring road to say, this one is qualified, this one is not, this one is in. And outside there, there are people who are waiting to hear the, the message. Why can't you just use that energy to go and testify and win at least one? One! One! The Bible says one soul is worth more than 10,000 wells. 
One soul. So instead of us fighting, let's use that time to win souls. That's the only business. The only reason why we are here. You will see them fighting even in the media. You will see them. Remember these words. Let us use everything that is in us to win souls. One day I, I asked myself this question. How many souls have we baptized so far? I checked. Since January up to December, how many souls have we? You know, when I asked myself such a question, I said, Lord, help us. But for us to receive this message, God used some, some other people. He used a pastor somewhere. He inspired a brother somewhere to bring this message to us. Now that we are in, we are busy fighting. Who is going to testify? Who is going to testify? Who is going to testify? Let's all be united. Amen. Amen. I believe we all we all saw the message that I put on group because of the, the concerns that we raised. Let me say to you that the elders they are busy running around to make sure that that issue is resolved. It is going to be resolved. And we are going to have that as it was declared on that day. Yes, it's not high time to jump. No. Let us be patient. There is a time when I, I, I even also said I am not comfortable in attend, with attending church in the afternoon. I myself, I said, no, this is, this is, there's something that is not right with this. But I had to leave it unto the Lord. And to say, God, you know my desire. You know the request of your children. And when I said that, I felt that calmness as if it was solved. And I know whenever that feeling comes, I know that it's settled. So don't worry, saints. Something good is coming. Something good is going to happen. Have faith and believe God. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we stand? For a scripture reading. I'm not going to be long. We are just going to be short. Our time is already spent. Gone. Quarter past three. Maybe for 30 minutes or so. We are just going to be fellowshipping around this thought it is well so let's open our bibles to Bible to kings chapter 4 kings verse 26 verse 26 Second Kings two. Two Kings chapter four. Chapter four. Verse uh, twenty six. Right, I will read. Nizo funda.
Run now. I pray thee to meet her. And say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. May the Lord bless his word. We may be seated. Let's all know about this, of this case of the Shunammite woman and uh, the prophet Elisha. This Shunammite woman, she was uh, a woman who was kind uh, to an extent that uh, she used to to, to to see Elisha passing through their home. Elisha the prophet passing through their home maybe going to the outreaches there. So Elisha used to pass through. Then something said to, to her why can't we just do something for this man? Maybe to give him some food so that he can eat and pass. Right, maybe let's, let's, let's start from verse 18. Uh, not 18 as such. Let's start from verse... Uh, um, okay, no, verse 8. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunemi, where was a great woman and she constrained him to eat bread. This was the woman, the Shunammite woman, who constrained Elisha the prophet to pass through. Maybe, maybe Elisha was going to missionary. Maybe he was going to testify. Then this woman, she used to see her passing every day. Then one day, as she saw Elisha passing, she constrained him to eat bread. The Bible says, and as it was, that so oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is an holy man. Without Elisha saying a word, this woman, she perceived something in Elisha. And she said to the husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is a holy man of God. I believe maybe she had seen uh, Elijah's conduct. How he conducted himself. And there was something in this woman that said, no, I perceive that this is a holy man. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, uh, Behold, now I perceive that this is an holy man of God which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber. I pray thee on the, on the wall and let us set for him there a bed. This was a woman. Amen. Telling the husband, can't we do something good for this man of God? Right? Amen. And, and it, let us make a chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed and a table. And a stool and a candlestick. And it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. 
And it fell a day that he came thither. And he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi's servant, Call this Shunammite woman. Call this Shunammite. You know, when, when this woman, when she was showing kindness to Elisha, Elisha, Elisha was just watching. Until one day, he said to his servant, call this Shunammite. You know, sometimes we do some things for the Lord. We work for the Lord. You sacrifice your time, my sister. And maybe you wonder, is God seeing me? I'm doing this, but nothing is happening. He is watching everything that you are doing. All the sacrifice that you are doing, all what you have done, God is watching you. As we were coming to church, you know, it was raining. Then we were using a baki, an open truck. I was feeling for those that were seated at the back. Saying, but God, what are we going to do to this? They have sacrificed, even if it is raining. And I said, no. God must grant them their desires. That is what I said to God. It is raining and they are going to church. Why is there some who just who are not even worried about coming to church? Hear me, my brother. Whatever sacrifice, no whatever sacrifice no that you have done, it is going to be paid back unto you. God is not a man. He is not a man. He is a man. And he owes no man nothing. He is going to bless you more than what you, have, you are expecting. My advice is. Continue coming to church. Continue sacrificing. Continue working for the Lord. One day, you realize this. Maybe if you doubt this, take your diary now and write it down that Brother Matimba is saying, God is going to reward me. I don't want to hear your desire. It is between you and God. I said, God is going to reward you in a way that you don't know how. Hallelujah. Amen. So, you know, sometimes we do things and the devil comes to us. We sacrifice for the Lord. And the devil comes and whispers, look, you have lost this. You have I have learned a lesson in life. Never to miss a service because of this worldly thing. Until at my workplace, they said, no, this one doesn't want to come to to, to work on Sunday. Others, they do come. Then I say to them, if it means that I will lose this job, let it be. Sometimes you need to take a stand. Defend what you believe. If it means that they are going to take you to the lion's den, let it be. But what I know is God is able to take care of you. Whatever situation that you are going through, let me safely say, there is a man here. There is a man here who will turn on the light for you. Amen. So I told them, if it means that you cut my salary, 
and give those that are coming to work on Sunday, do it. I'm not going to miss church because of work. One day I prayed unto the Lord that I need work. Then he gave me that work. Now because I'm working, I no longer want to I no longer have time to go to, to go to church. It's something that is senseless. You pray to God that He give you a job. Now that He has given you a job, you say, I can't go to church because of this job that God has given me. No! No! One day I invited someone to church. They were looking for employment. God is faithful. If you come to him with a desire, he will grant you. But he wants to see your reaction after. If you come to him looking for a baby, he will give you that baby. But he wants to see your reaction after he gives you that baby. So I invited someone and say, you are looking for a job. Can we go together to church so that you are prayed for? You gave that job. Then I say to him, I usually fast myself. So on this day, I was only fasting mood. mood. And this one, this visitor, he said to me, let me also join you in this fasting. I could see that this man is determined. And that day we had a baptism. So we came to church early. Amen. Amen. We did the baptism process. And he was there standing. The time for the service came. He was there standing when the time for praying for the needs came. I went to him and said, but you are looking for the job. They are being prayed for there. Can you just go and be prayed for? So he went. He came forward and be prayed for. I said to him, never tell them your your, your desire, what, what you want. want. Just hold it in your heart. God knows that. So he was prayed for. And you know what happened? It was Sunday, and Monday, he went to the market where there was a lot of people looking for, 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 for job. Then he says, there was a, a, a car that came and it stopped some meters from him. Then a lot of people ran to the car. So he was like walking. Then the, the owner of that car, he said, I need that one. That one. That one. That is how he got employed. Then he called me and said, ah, that, that thing works. Amen. Amen. Let me say this to you, my sister. This thing works. It can sort out all your issues. Whatever thing that you are going through. Let me say this thing works. It worked for a visitor. He got the job. Just the very day that he visited here. Of course he believed. But there is something that happened. The following Sunday, I said to him, let's go to church. He said, I know I'm going to work. Sometimes we are 
We are forced to go to work. Yes, it happened. But there came some time when he was free on Sundays. I went to him and said, let's go to church. He was reluctant. No, I'm tired. No, I just want to do my washing. He gave me a lot of excuses. Then I said, he has missed it. Guess what happened? That employment came to an end. But I knew what caused it. God is not worried about uh, maybe our joblessness. No. He is worried about our salvation. All these other things he just gives us as a parcellus. The Bible says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Of course, sometimes he uses sickness to bring us to salvation. Sometimes he brings joblessness to bring us to salvation. Sometimes he uses poverty to bring you to salvation. But the main thing is not that job. He will definitely give you. But after giving you, he is worried about your salvation. So if you say, brother, I can't come to church because I want to do my washing. You want to do your washing on a service day. I have seen people doing wrong sacrifices in their lives. They wake up in the morning, go to work, even when it is cold, even during rain, they sacrifice because they want bread of course the Bible says we must work you must work yes but you can't miss church service because of these material things others you hear them saying no I have a meeting a meeting on a service time You would have done opportunity cost to say, let me miss church and go for a family meeting. One day, there was a man who was invited to go to church and he said, suffer me. Let me go and bury my father. And Jesus answered him by saying, let the dead bury their dead. It was a hard saying. But it was true. You are saying you, you, can't, you can't go to church because you want to go for shopping. Ah. But you don't miss going to, to work. Even if they say, no, work until up to 8. 8 p.m. You sacrifice. You know, I've, 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 I've seen one thing. God, he can bless whatever you touch with your hands. That's why it is important to work. Don't just complain and say, no, God is not blessing me. You need to work so that God blesses that work. So, if you 
Sacrifice your time in working for your boss even during service time. Yes, God, God will bless that, job, that, that boss. He will bless him. But he will use you. He will use your hands to bless him. Amen. I was just passing. <laughs> right. So this Shunamite woman, he was kind to the prophet until the prophet said to Gehazi then she was called right. verse, 18, verse 18 and he said unto him say now unto her behold thou hast been careful Thou hast been careful. For us with all this care. Alright. What, what, what is to be done for thee? It was a question. Would thou be spoken for the to the king or to the captain of the horse? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? That was a question that was asked to this woman. Because she was careful. She was caring. Helping the men of God until when she was asked. Hmm. Amen. Right. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehaz answered, Verily she had no child. So she was caring for them prophet of God, but she has no child. God was seeing her. Sometimes when we care for God, you will be just watching. That sister is coming to church early, cleaning the church. That sister is paying a tithe. That sister is testifying. That sister is doing this. God will be watching. Like what he was doing to this Shunamite woman. She kept on doing good things. Even if she was she didn't have a child. God is watching over you, my brother. He is concerned to the dot. That very thing that you are worried about, he is concerned even this afternoon. Amen. I always say, it's good to bring diaries to church so that we write down Amen. Amen. Right. Um, where are we? Verse 13, 14. 14. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gaius answered, Verily she has no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, what? About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. When and she said, what? Nay, my Lord. She even doubted that. Maybe she was looking at her condition. Maybe you are looking at your condition. And you are saying, this cannot happen. I am saying to you that very thing that you have been desiring for long is going to happen. 
Even if you doubt it, it is going to happen. Yes, because this word will never fail. Heaven and earth may pass away, but not the word of God. So she doubted. But it, it once happened to Abraham. Sarah laughed and said, Ah, what? Ah. Right. Good. No, my Lord. Where are we? All right. And she said about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine hand. Made. And the woman conceived and bear a son at the season that Elisha yes, had said Elisha. unto her. But if you want to check when she was caring for this maybe she was just maybe she, she had just that good heart she wasn't even expecting that one day this thing that I'm doing it will give me a reward that I want. Amen. Amen. So she said Nay, my Lord thou man of God do not lie unto thine handmaid. And the woman conceived and bare a son. At that season that Elisha had said unto her according to the time of life. And when the child was grown it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers and he said unto his father my head, my head that same child that they got from God. It came a time that she, the child fell sick. He said, my head, my head. You know, when I was reading this, uh, we usually pray for people here. They will come and say, oh, I've got this terrible headache. Some of these headaches you know, we are hearing that this, this, this son, he said, my head, my head. And he said to a lad, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him to and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon. And then he died. Right? Good. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. And he shut the door upon him and went out. <laughs> and she called unto the husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of these the asses, right, that, that I may run to the man of God and come again. Right. So, where we have read, we saw here now m meeting the man of God. And the man of God saw her coming. When he saw her coming, the Bible says, so she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. Verse 26. Right. That was Elisha saying uh, to Geazi, run now. I pray thee to meet her and say unto her, is it well with, her, with you? Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered. I liked the way the woman answered him. She never said there is a funeral back home. If it, let's say it was you, sister. 
being asked such a question. Is it well with you? How are you going to answer? Are you going to say, no, my brother, it is well with me. When you know that there is a funeral going on. Let's be, let's be, let's be, let's be, let's be innocent. Were you going to say it is well? Something that is difficult. But this woman, she answered by saying, it is well. The Bible says, Christ, o Christ is a high priest um, priest um, of our confession. Why, look, Amen. What you confess when I look, um, happens. Whether you confess it, you confess negative things um, because you also. have confessed it will happen. So this woman cashed the revelation. She heard the revelation. Yes. It is not well. But if I say it's not well, what is going to happen? She maintained a positive Positive confession. She says, What yena? It is well. Maybe you have some situations. You are broke. You don't have money. You are not employed. You are sick. You have got every reason to cry. The devil is pointing you to symptoms, to circumstances. Just tell him that it is well with me. It is well with you. It is well with you, my brother. Don't look at that problem. It depends on what you are looking at. If you look at your condition, it's going to remain. If you say it's not well with me, it's going to be like that. If you say I'm sick, that sickness is going to remain with you. It depends on what you are looking at. Caleb and Joshua, that day when they come back from uh, spying the land, the Bible says they stilled the people because there was confusion there. Some when they went to Canaan, they saw the descendants of Anak. They saw the giants. It was true that the giants were there. With the six fingers, yes, it was true. But the promise had said, I have given you, I have given you the land, I have given you the land for you to possess. So the Bible says, they still the people and say, let go at once. To possess the land. Let's go at once. For we are more than ever. To possess it. Two out of twelve. 
which means the majority were saying we can't. It's not what they say, my sister, about you. It's what God says about you. That matters. Hallelujah. Amen. So this woman, this Shunammite woman, says, answered by saying, it is well. I would like to think that because of her words, then it became well to her. Amen. The prophet says, in the message, expectations, Fifty zero eight one zero. Fifty three. Symptoms. They are lying vanities. Don't receive them. This woman refused to accept that my child is dead. She refused that. Even. Even when the child was lying there dead. She said it is well with, with the, that child that was dead. Don't receive them. Don't have nothing to do with them. Maybe you are looking at me this afternoon. And you have got a condition. You have a situation. The doctors have said, no, we can't help you. The results from qualified personnel are saying, no, we can't help you. Let me safely say, those are lying vanities. Don't fear for me. I know where I'm standing. Yes. I know what I'm talking about. When it comes to a showdown, God is ready for it. He's watching, looking at you. At that very condition that you are in now, God is watching at you. Don't cry to your brother and say, look at my condition. They will pull you down. Call Jesus onto the scene. He is a present help in times of need. Plus, you are not here on, our, on your own. He is the one who called you yeah, to this, this message. So do you think he can fail to heal you? Do you think he can fail to give you his desire? Do you think he can fail to give you that house that you want? That um, you know what? Amen. If you want to draw a picture of what the, the type of a house that you want. And take it to God. Tell him that God, I need a house of this shape, this size, this magnitude. That is what I want. If you want it that way, draw it and keep it. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't worship a dead God. We worship a God who is alive. Who answers prayers. If you are here sick, you have a condition. Uh, I don't know what to say. I don't know. But anything that you want from the Lord, just hold it. We, we want to pray after this. 
And you, I want you to hold it. And if you want, promise him. Say, God, if you give me this, if you give me this job, I will never miss a service. If you give me this, I will work for you. If you give me this house, I will do this. I want you to challenge him. Right. So the prophet says, We were reading out on the let's see from the scroll up the line vanities. Line is strength, this one. Right. If you look to them, you are looking away from God. If you look at the dead child, you are looking away. In other words, you are Turning your back. We are pambana. Against God. You are saying, I don't have anything to do with you. God. Let me focus on my problems. The prophet is saying, if you look at your symptoms, you are looking away from God. Looking away from God because of a situation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We look at the unseen. Yes. Look at the unseen. I know. That you are not seeing it with these eyes. But the prophet is saying, look at the unseen. That unseen is the real thing. The devil is whispering, you have been in this condition for quite a while because you are seeing that condition. So he actually forced you to believe what you are seeing with these two eyes, with your eyes. Turn your eyes from that and look at the unseen. Not at what we see. No one could look at what they see and be Christians. Christians, I'm a Christ. They don't look at symptoms. Even if you see them, don't believe them. They are there, yes. Never accept. Never believe. Never accept those symptoms. Reject them. The Bible says, resist the devil. Sometimes it comes through symptoms. Look, brother, you've been applying and your applications they, they, have been, they were being rejected. He will give you a very good list. A long one. You have done this in 2004. It never worked. You did this in 2005. It never worked. 2010 you did this and you look at that and say surely it's true. If you believe that, you miss your breakthrough. No one could look at what they see and be Christians. You have got to believe the things that are unseen. For it's by faith are you healed not by sight or by feeling. You know that day I failed some vibrations when the brother was preaching. When that man of God came I just heard that thing. it's not by your feeling. No. 
God had already given you. But you need to have that courage. Stand and defend your God-given victory. Don't be a coward. It has been given to you freely. So if you are not patient enough, you will lose it. Oh, brother, we prayed for a place. We prayed for a place. It's taking long. God gave us a substitute. So I know it's not going to happen. I'm standing here. Let me repeat this. It has been given. Never cry anymore. It is said we must start to thank God. You know, when you thank Him, you will provoke Him to action. This woman, she had every right to be crying because there was a funeral at home. Amen. There was a funeral. Yes, there was a funeral there. She was supposed to be crying. But she never accepted that. She said, it is well. What a powerful confession. He is waiting for your confession. This afternoon. Even now. He is waiting for you. I know the devil is whispering in, in, in your mind. He's saying, no, but Brother Matimba doesn't know what I'm going through. Whatever thing that you are going through, it is well. It is well. If they ask you, is it well with you? Answer by saying, it is well. Never allow the devil to see your tears. Never allow the devil to I have been prayed for. Nothing happened. Okay. He is a high priest of our confession. And if you confess negatively, you will receive according to your confession. What you confess will happen. Moses was told. Why are you crying? There is a red sea in front of me. Yes, I can see it. It's there. So what? You have the word. I have given you all what it takes in this journey. Speak the word. Confess it. Say it. It will happen. What happened? He spoke the word. And there was a way. Your way is not going to come from somewhere. Your breakthrough is in you. You have your breakthrough. This afternoon, you have your breakthrough. But you need to say it out. We usually sing, let the weak say, I'm strong. Let the poor say, I'm rich. Why? 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 Let the unemployed say, I'm employed. When you say that, when you say that, you will receive according to your confession. There is power in positive 
Confession. There is power. It is well. 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 It shall be well. The devil is hearing what I'm saying. It is well. It is well with you. It is well with you, my brother. We are enforcing that. It is well. So, we are now be- we, have, we, we, have, we are now becoming to see that, that you mustn't when just go and say some things out there. Just let your tongue just go loose. Just to say anything. Because it will happen according to what you have said. If you say it, it will happen. Right. Right. The prophet says in the same message. Uh, all right, but this one was preached in 1953. 1953. You are sons and daughters of God. Heirs of the kingdom. Right now we are kings. Claim your legal rights. Because we are sons and daughters of God, we have rights. And those rights are legal. We are not violating any scripture. They are legal rights. Don't let Satan press anything on you. You know you, 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 how the prophet is prophet saying it here. Don't let Satan press ego push. It's not just putting it nicely. Pressing with force. So he will bring that doubt in you and he press it to make sure that you accept. Don't accept it. Even if he presses it on you, you are not saved. Sometimes I know he usually speaks through the mind. Because you've done that. So you are not forgiven. Because you did this. Because on last year, even if you were prayed for, that yet they came again. So it means maybe you are not you were not healed. He wants to bring such thoughts. Don't accept it. Even if he presses on you. Don't let Satan press anything on you. You are of God. And he has got no rights to hold it. Everybody is always looking at their symptoms. The pastor will pray for them. They go over and say, well, I don't seem to be any better. Even after prayer. So usually, you know, when, when people are prayed for, they expect an immediate change. The devil is stubborn. Even after prayer, he will still come to you to doubt and press it into you. So that you doubt the prayer. But is it? Yes, I've been prayed for. Uh, that prayer. Maybe it's, 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 maybe it's, 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 it's not. It's, it's useless. Why now? Because I'm still seeing those things. He will 
Make you see those symptoms. Until you know one day. During prayer line. I was just watching. How things were going. So it was a lot of ministers there. And uh, you could to see that. No this one. He doesn't want to go to that ministry. So he's, he's actually avoiding. He's putting it into a man. It's not in a man. I see It's not even in a man. It's your faith in God. If you believe in a man, you will miss your blessings. Amen. Amen. Right. And he's got no rights to hold it. Okay. Everybody is always looking at their symptoms. The pastor will pray for them. They go over and say, well, I don't seem to be any better. That's not, well, that is not I see call. Symptoms is the worst thing. That is, that is one of the greatest scarecrows. Scarecrows. So the devil is good. Scarecrows. And one of those scarecrows, he has got a small scarecrows and greater and greatest you know in the in the in, even in these uh, armories where they keep the, some weapons you, you see they have small guns and, and, and those big guns that can cause maximum damage so in the armor of the devil he has got also some tools. And one of the greatest that he uses is symptoms. The prophet is saying that is one of the greatest scarecrows. So you, so you, you want to tell me that you, you can be intimidated by a scarecrow. Something that is, it's not, it's not, it's not the actual thing. It's, it's, it's meant to scare you. We mustn't pay attention to, to those greatest scarecrows of the devil. Amen. Symptoms don't have nothing to do with it. It's because God say so. Shall we stand? Your healing is not in a pastor. Is not in a brother Matimbe. It's because God said so. And you can only be healed when you put your faith into the Lord. We are only here to remind you that no, it has been done already. Because we know that the devil has got his ministers out there. He brings doubts. He brings worries to pull you down. The prophet says, God has got messengers. And the devil also, he has messengers. He's got messengers that will come to you and say, Sister, I, you know what? It's not going to happen. Because you've aborted, God has not forgiven you. One reason 
the main reason why he was crucified is because of our sins. And let me tell you this. The Bible says before the foundation of the world a lamp was slain why, why, why was that lamp slain? Why? To pay for our sins. Names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Before there was a foundation, God he is the Alpha and Omega. He knows everything that was going to happen before there was even an atom here on earth. Now we are in 2023. You are here saying um, you are going through a situation and you, the devil is whispering to you to say maybe he has forsaken you. When he was slain before the foundation of the world for you and me for your sins and my sins for your sickness and even my sickness he made a plan for you so if you are doubting it now it will be, it will be like saying this thing is, is, is a lie Refuse the lie of the devil. You know, I, I, you know, sometimes I was talking to my brother uh, yesterday. Why sometimes God he prefers to use people that are looked down upon until one time he used the pole even when he had a bad background I said to my brother if it was like this time a brother like Paul when he was like let's say he's in the message and he comes to say, no, I've received, you know, I've met with God. If people, when people knew his background, that this man was a killer, they were, he was not going even to be accepted. Because they judge you based on what you have done. They can come and actually remind you that brother. By the way, in 19... 1996. You did this. Are you God? Did you die for me? I know that the devil is actually whispering to say, no, sister, you've done this. You are beyond. You can't be assisted. Tell that devil that I am a child of God and I'm saying to you, it is well with me. Oh, my brother, you know, some are going um, overseas. I'm left alone. Until other people they just join in doing some things without even understanding. Because I have seen that brother doing it. So I am doing that. One day I told my wife we are, prepared, we are, we are put close now. 
when I resigned from work. Other people told you that your, your, your husband is, is somehow mad. I never blamed them. I never approached them and say, no, I'm not, I'm not mad, I know what I'm doing. Because they had never met what I've met. They, 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 they never met with what I have I have experienced. When I had that dream, I was alone. When I made up my mind, I was alone. So it was pointless for me to consult them because that was my own experience. They will come to you, sister, and you know, question you, why did you do this? Answer them by saying, I have done this in obedience to God. So, my wife actually, she, she, she said something that I, I never answered. She, 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 will, she will realize later. Why can't you just do like Living employment when people are being given US dollars. I want to be pure my US dollars. That's madness. You can't do that. There was a friend. She had a friend who actually came and said, But how can what Blessed did such a thing? But I just kept quiet. Kept, 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 kept. Sometimes you need to keep quiet. Sometimes the devil, the devil comes through your brother. Don't harm your, don't harm your brother. It's not your brother. Your brother is right. It's not your wife. Your wife is right. It is the devil who, is, who has borrowed your wife's mouth to use it. So if you are not careful, you kick your brother. Our Lord Jesus Christ once said to Peter, Get thee behind, you Satan. She wasn't referring to the Peter that you are. She was actually, he was actually rebuking the devil that was. Alright. Good. So I just gave you a time. Until when she saw things happening and some things manifesting and she then came to me and said, now I understand. Five years down the line, she then came and said, no. Now I understand why you took that decision. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not going to get into detail on this. But uh, when, I just want to say, when God tells you to do something, don't listen to these other things. Christianity is an individual affair. It's not what your mother says. What your brother says. It's something that is between you and God. 
If God pronounces your blessing now and you don't seem to be seeing it with his eyes, it doesn't mean that it's not there. Never entertain any negative thought. If you doubt it, you will delay it or you will be like stopping it from happening. When God says something, it's as good as it has happened. How many has got desires? How many are going through situations? Let's close our eyes. I want you to mean business with God. He is a high priest of our confession. We have seen in the Bible that this Shunammite woman she confessed by saying it is well with me. Though the child was dead when you read further down you find out that that same child she was resurrected. He was resurrected. But it is started by confession. The positive confession of this Shunammite woman. If you have a positive confession, the right mental attitude this afternoon, if you mean business with God, on that very thing that you want, I feel like to say that house that you have been waiting for, that you have been praying for, it's coming, my sister. It's going to come. God is, has heard your prayer. He has given it to you. But don't listen. Don't look at the symptoms. Don't listen to what the devil is saying. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. God has given you. It is well with you. It is well. This afternoon. It's well with you. Shall we all come to a time of prayer? I want you to say. In fact. I want you to thank God. For giving you. That very thing. That you have been desiring for. If it is. Salvation, thank God. If it is the Holy Ghost, thank God. If it is a house, I want you to thank Him for doing it for you. Shall we all pray? Spirit, reject that sickness, reject that poverty. You have that positive confession. He is here to give you a desire. What is sickness before him? What is poverty before him? Let's continue to pray. I want to invite those with needs to come to the altar. We want to enforce a change. And now he's near the sea, baptizing Jesus, the great physician. Now he's near. He is the great physician. Listen to me now. He is not worried about your poverty that you are worried about. He is worried about your soul. But I want you to see that he can bless you with whatever you are looking for. But when he blesses you, commit your life unto him.
God is here this afternoon to bless you. The Shunammite woman said, it is well. But it wasn't well. She had every right to cry. Let's continue to pray. Let's continue to pray with our eyes closed. to see him now in our lives. Don't wait to say, no, I am going to see it in the rapture. You have to walk with him. See him every day in your life like what happened to Enoch. He walked with God until he was sure that this promise of rapture is true. We have to see him in our lives. See him at our workplaces. See him dealing with situations. Our situations. Your situation. It is where well with you. That devil that is lying to you we want to prove to him that greater is he I don't know how I, 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 I can say this. Greater is he, my sister, who is in you than the one in your situation. You have to believe. I want to invite Brother Promise. Promise. Those that have come to the to the altar remain here. But we are going to make one prayer. If you are there seated or standing, you have a request, something that you want from the Lord. I want you to touch God with your faith. Our brother is going to pray. And commit us unto the Lord. My friend, my, my Mzukuru, when we were coming to, as we were about to come to church, he said to me, What he gave me? Malume, I'm, I've, I'm, I'm not feeling well. I've got a serious stomach pain. Then I say to him, let's go to church. By the time we will get into church, come to me and, 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 and tell me your, about your condition. Let's go to church. By the time we we'll get by the door, I want you to tell me how you are feeling. That stomach pain. 
it just disappeared mysteriously. My precious sister Dombo, who is not in our midst, she is called, she, she, she called in, the, in the morning. She said, Brother, will you pray? The child is not feeling okay. That's why she is not in our midst. Then I say to her, I will call you. It was around nine. I, I said to her, I will call you at around eleven. Then I asked a certain brother to pray for her. When it was around 12, I said, I had forgotten. I said, I will call, to, I will call Sister Dombo. I called and said, Sister, how is the condition of the child? She said to me, There is a Big change. The boat is no longer hot as it was. Brother, there is no prayer resistant situation. It's not in a brother or, or a special somebody. When you believe God, he will definitely give you your husband's desire. Just say, it is well with me. Shall we pray? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our services come to an end. Maybe let me just give this testimony. Right, I, 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 will, I will give my part. I know maybe others will say, ah, maybe it, it was supposed to be given by Brother Promise. No, I, I will give my part. One day, I just say to the Lord, the work of God is going to be great. We are going to. We have more people coming to church. So how are we going to do this without the means of carrying them to church? Some they don't feel good when they go in a pickup. So I was just thinking and, and, and we were fellowshipping with my brother say, no, I can see God just in the near future. We, we, we are going to be using more than three cars to carry saints to, to church. I was just, and I was, you know, I was saying, how is it going to be? Because now we, we have got limited resources. Right. Then he, there was a time then as my brother was going to Venda, as he usually went there, he said, ah, my boss what? just said, may I can have that small car. He just gave it to me. To on my side, and I know he has got his he's got his way of seeing on my side. And it was a prayer answered. And another one is coming. Because I desired three to be helping us carrying. This, this you know, sometimes it's it's it's, 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 it's embarrassing. When you invite some other people to church, then you put them at the back and it's raining. But God, God is a reward of those that diligently. That's why I even said, may God grant these ones that are at the back when it is raining, but they are going to church. 
to make it worse. One is a visitor who just said no. I want to go to church. In fact, that sister, Chriselda, she went. She, she was working today. She knocked off a twelve. Then, but she wanted to come to church. So I said, let me go at their workplace by the gate. To, to wait for her. her. So that when she knocks off, but I quickly take her to back home to change clothes. Because she was putting on a uniform. And she, 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 she then delayed to come until it was 22 past 12. Then I said, ah, maybe she had changed the mind. Let me just go and pick other brothers. I went back home, picked uh, these other brothers. As we were coming to church now, we met our sister along the way. It was already late. But she said, if you can allow me to go and quickly change so that I don't miss a service. A visitor when God looks at that determination, he can, he can actually give. No, let me say, may God grant you your heart's desires because you have done this. Amen. Abraham was told because you have done this. God bless you. Let's go and invite as many visitors as you can. Love one another until we meet. Those that need some books as we are spoken words as we are going out you can just pick one and God bless you. Amen.